Hello guys, welcome RC Shim on my antenna testing hill. Reason for antenna testing today are the VAS Cyclops V2 antennas or antenna singular. I have the helicopters that I trust with me and I also will test the iFlight Crystal HD patches against them. And with this stationary test we can have good comparable results. I will not explain too much. There is already a video from this location that I will link you here now. Uh, check it out. As a reviewer I'm curious what's inside those the vast Cyclops with its kind of rigid cables. You see you can bend it. It stays in place. It's glued on but I cut the glue. That's what's inside magic antenna four single antennas with six lobes let's begin the testing with the iFlight crystal which I like because they are behind the faceplate they look really nice and two omnis and it's the convenience winner 25 megabits 25 milliwatts channel 1 and I will point it like straight record, 45 degrees record and 90 degrees record, which results in three little videos with SRT files. In the SRTs I see the bitrate and I will just average it out. Five seconds each clip and average it out. Quite good image. Let's record. One, two, three, four, five. It was 2.5 or 3 ambits, not too bad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the 45 degree we had a little below 1 megabit. And now the 90 degree which is pointing here. 90 degree with the eye flight crystal. It almost drops out. It's 0 0.8 megabits and not happy. You couldn't really fly with this. Swap them goggle antennas to the three turn helicopters. What do we see? Four, around four mbit. Okay, check it out. One, two, three, four, five. Bingo. One, two, three, four, five. Not too good either with 0 0.8 ambit and in the 90 degree we lost image. Yeah. So you see here you have an advantage if you use Omnis. If you look like 90 degree away from your target which is very far out you can lose or almost lose the image with those directionals. So you should really be in this 40 or 90 degree cone. I mean, I link you all the, the infos of the antennas below, but yeah, they are directional. That's their job. And pointing straight, I get around four embeds. I think four embeds is what we can lock in here. Swapping to the seven turn helicals and see what kind of higher numbers, I expect higher numbers of course, what numbers we get. They lose a bit on the convenience factor. Uh, they make you look a bit nerdy maybe. Pointing them straight. Not too pleasantly surprised. And I've seen this in quite a lot of my testings now. The seven turns didn't give me that much more range or bit rate than the three turn helicals. So I don't know what's going on there. Maybe if I point them really good. No, 4.7. So, okay, let's record the samples. One, two, three, four, five. 45 degree, one, 
two, three, four, five. Zero point three. That that was not a lot. So I will not get anything on the ninety degree. Yeah. Still the last image, but yeah, connection dropped. So of course they are more directional than the three turn helicopters. That's to expect it. But what I didn't expect is that I don't get anything more in terms of bitrate out of them. That's kind of a shame. 4.7. So this kind of yeah, reconfirms my my practical experience with the seven turns. They don't give me much more gain. So maybe the five turn helicals are a compromise, but. Other than this, I'm really f it's really fine for me to use the three turn helicals. Okay, back with the vast Cyclops. That's what it looks like. It's quite small. You can angle it a bit with these semi-rigid cables. You should always angle it a bit up, I guess, because you naturally look down. But for the test here, I will have them quite straight. Pointing them straight, cord when pointing. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it went up to 5.2, so that was quite high numbers. Let's get the 45 degree samples. One, two, three, four, five. And the 90 degree will be hard. Uh, I think it lost the connection. One, two, five. It even disconnected, I guess. Kind of pleasantly surprised now that this thing gave me better range than the three turn helpers. Each number here is a five second average of my measurement. I did three measurements per antenna, looking straight. 45 and 90 degrees to the side. Sometimes 90 degrees you don't even get an image, so there's no measurements for the helicals. It was really weird to see that the seven turns didn't give me more range than the three turns, but you see already on the 45 degree you barely get image with them. And of course the Vast Cyclops are the overall winner here. Now I want to show you all the Omnis, starting with the normal ones. If you have the V2 goggles and the V1, Watch out not to swap out those antennas. The older have only like two dents and the newer have three dents on top. I also marked my new antennas with a green label. I struggled a bit to even get a video connection and now it's like 0 0.5 megabits. That was quick. They are really easy to screw on. Look at, I think I already showed this, how tiny they are. Baffles my mind each and every time. Image transmission lost. That's not good. Come on. So for ultimate range, the stock stubbies are better. It's kind of surprising. I do not get any image. So I noticed uh, flying around close with higher milliwatts. The truasses are way better than the stocks. Um, get a good and consistent uh, signal all the time. But here for just range, like 2.3 kilometers on lowest milliwatt. Yeah, that's a result. Maybe I have to compare in a 200 milliwatt setting the stubbies. Those are the VAS stubbies. I already told that they are a bit hard to screw in, but they are nice. Let's, let's see if we get image. I don't get anything with the VAS stubbies as well. So VAS and Truacy are worse than the stock antennas if it comes to ultimate range. Okay, one more try. Up the power to like 200 milliwatts. Stock stubbies, zero degree. One, two, three, four, five. 45 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. 90 degree. One, 
two, three, four, five. Still had like three ambits looking 90 degree-ish. It's quite surprising. Next antennas. True RC stub is 200 milliwatts. What do we see? Zero degree. One, two, three, four, five. 45 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. 90 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. They looked quite similar. Now the video aerial system studies. That's considerably worse megabits, I can tell you already. Zero degree. One, two, three, four, five. Forty-five degrees. One, two, three, four, five. Ninety degree. One, two, three, four, five. So what I instantly noted is the megabits are not as high with those compared to the true assis, but they are a bit more consistent. So like only five ambits straight, but then four here and three there versus like nine ambit down with the true assis. So I would still consider them to be a bit worse. And because I'm curious, I do an additional little test round with 200 milliwatts and the directionals. Maybe we see a bit more difference there. Last Cyclops V2, straight down. One, two, three, four, five. 45 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. 90 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. I fly patch uh, straight. One, two, three, four, five. Forty-five degrees. One, two, three, four, five. Ninety degrees. One, two, three, four, five. Three twin helicals. One, two, three, four, five. Three turn helicals. Forty-five degrees. One, two. Three, four, five. Ninety degrees. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now to the results for the 200 milliwatt measurements again. Three measurements in looking straight, 45 degrees to the side and 90 degrees to the side. Of course, looking to the side always the things with omnidirectional antennas will have an advantage. But it was very surprising to me that I got more points, more average bit rate with the iFlight patches. This blue line here is the average, so it's a bit nicer to look at the jumpy lines. And I got in total 12.2 Mbits for 5 seconds here. The 45 degrees, however, it looks worse because those patches don't have a lot of beam width. So you have only six megabits here. And these three here, they already come from the Omni antennas, I can tell you. So if we check the three turn helicals, they are quite close and I know they are really good. So I like to use them. But you see they are yeah, three ambits higher if you look a bit to the side. And they still give you around 3 Mbits, like if you were using omnidirectionals, 90 degree to the side. The VAS antennas, VAS Cyclops, gave me 10 Mbits. I don't know why this line drops here so much. Maybe it would help to record like 60 seconds of, of um, samples and average them out, but yeah, it's a time constraint, sorry. It was surprising that they have so good of uh, reception on the 45 degree mark. Yeah, and average one with 3.5 on the 90 degree. I kind of like the true RC stubbies and I like to see them uh, on the upper side here. 
they gave me 7 Mbit, which is quite nice, but it's also the same as the stock ones. So you really only have the advantage of them being uh, yeah, like one third of the length of the original antennas. So they are really convenient to leave them on. They give you around the same numbers like the stocks. Oh, that's really, really funny. And yeah, there must have been something wrong. The vast dubbies are really, yeah, only like half as good here, here. Okay, on the 90 degree side, but yeah, what's up with this numbers here? I don't know. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to use the vast. Yeah, and those dubbies, truces and vast, they are really expensive. So if you upgrade, if you want to upgrade your stubbies, check the iFlight ones. I didn't test them separately because I only have two of them, but I think they are quite good. So thanks a lot for watching. It was awesome testing up here. I will compile all the info now for you in a hopefully watchable video. If you like it, please thumbs up, subscribe, please consider Patreon, like for example Ulrich did. One of my newest subscribers on Patreon. Thanks a lot for your support. See you over there. Thanks to you other guys for watching. Leave me your feedback in the comments, suggestions for further testing. Of course I want to do testing V1 goggles versus V2 goggles if there's any difference, but I can't do it today because you have to rebind the air unit. So I should have two air units down there, but then I don't know if both air units send the same strength. So yeah, maybe in the next test. See you there. Bye bye.